Do cell phones cause brain cancer? Ooh, that's a good one. I reckon they do, yeah. If you're on them a lot, yes. It can't be good for you. I did decide to stop, you know, putting the uh, the phone whilst I'm driving in my groin and start moving it over there in case it's going to cause <laughs> testicular cancer. <laughs> my doctor advised me on this. Now, it doesn't seem to make sense that cell phones should cause cancer because the radiation they emit is non-ionizing, which means it doesn't have enough energy to rip electrons off atoms or molecules and destroy DNA. So how would cell phones cause this type of cancer in the... No, man, that's, that's black magic to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the radiation from cell phones is almost identical to the radiation inside a microwave. The wavelengths are almost the same, about 15 centimeters long, basically the same size as your phone. All I know is microwaves, they like heat food up and like they fry, they fry like living stuff, living organisms. So maybe it would fry your brain? Barbecuing my brain slowly. <laughs> this led to various internet videos where cell phones were shown popping popcorn or cooking eggs. Now that is obviously impossible because the amount of power in a microwave is over a thousand times the power of radiation of microwaves emitted from your cell phone. Would you be concerned about living near a cell phone tower? Do you think that's worse than just... Yeah. Literally right next to it, yeah, I'd have concerns about it, definitely. But the truth is this, if you live in an area with better reception, that means your phone has to emit less microwaves in order to transmit to the tower. So you're actually exposed to lower levels of microwave radiation living near a tower than living far from it. However, there have been some scientific studies that show very high level microwaves like those from a mobile phone can cause heat shock proteins to be released inside the body and it's thought that that could be related to the onset of cancer. So perhaps there is a reason to study the biological effects of cell phones on people. What would happen if a study came out saying that you were two or three times as likely to develop a brain tumor if you used a mobile phone regularly? Would that change? Absolutely. Your yeah. use? Two to three times is just massive. Like I know it's a slim odd, but still the, the chances are like, you don't want that to happen to anyone, let alone yourself. So. It definitely not use it as much. What if I told you that a study has come out that says over long periods of time, Jeez. there's a threefold increase in <laughs> oh brain God. tumors? A recently published Swedish study found that cell phone users were 30% more likely to develop glioma. That's the most common form of malignant brain cancer. And it gets worse. Those people who'd used a cell phone for over 25 years had a threefold increase in this type of cancer. Due to studies like that one and expert opinion, the World Health Organization actually classified cell phone radiation as possibly carcinogenic to humans. But now consider that brain cancers are exceedingly rare. In any given year, you have a 3 in 100,000 chance of developing a glioma. Now, according to the Swedish study, long-term cell phone use can increase that risk up to 9 in 100,000. Still a very small risk, but a significant increase. Now, given the scarcity of brain cancers, how can they really quantify this risk? The ideal way to do the experiment would be to perform a randomized control trial, which is where you get a group of people who don't use cell phones, randomly give half of them cell phones and force the other half to live without. And then follow them for 15 to 20 years and see how many in each group develop glioma. Oh, and you would need hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people to take part because of just how rare brain tumors are. And immediately you can spot the problem with this experimental design. Virtually everyone already has a cell phone. I mean, there are more mobile devices than there are people on Earth. More people have access to a cell phone than to a working toilet. So the next best way to do the experiment would be to perform a prospective observational study in which you gather a group of people and follow them over a period of decades, monitoring their cell phone use. And then you find out how many develop glioma and correlate that with their cell phone usage. The problem is people who use their cell phones a lot may differ in other ways than just their cell phone use. Plus there's the problem of scale. Even if you followed around 50,000 people for 10 years, you'd only expect to observe 20 gliomas. And that's not nearly enough to detect a difference between the groups. So the third way to do the experiment is to perform a case control study where you collect a group of people who have brain tumors, those are the cases, and you find a demographically very similar group who don't have brain tumors, those are the controls. 
and then you ask them about their behaviors over the previous decade and see if they differ markedly between the groups. For example, did the brain tumor cases use their phones a lot more than the controls? The Swedish study was one of these large-scale case control studies. But there is a question about whether this study was methodologically flawed. In hindsight, if you get a brain tumor, you might remember using your phone more than you did. And if you don't have a brain tumor, you might remember using it less. Now, there have been a few prospective studies completed, including one in Denmark, using almost the entire Danish population and records from their cell phone companies. And they found no link between cell phone usage and incidence of brain cancer. Another prospective study using almost one million women in the UK, again, found no link. So what are we supposed to believe then? What are we supposed to believe? This is where I think we really need to figure out the right methodology yeah, exactly. to look at it. And here's the thing, right? Over the last 15 to 20 years, almost everyone has used a mobile phone. Yeah. Mobile phone use has gone way up. Everyone's got one. So you can look at the actual brain cancer rates on the overall population. Yeah. And if there is a link, you would expect that to be going up. Is it? It is not. It is not, okay. If the results of the Swedish study were correct, then the rates of glioma would be more than 40% higher than they are. So it is extremely unlikely that cell phones actually cause brain cancer. And if they do, either the effects take decades to show, or the increase in risk is very, very small. Hello? Hey, so if you're looking for more ways to use your smartphone, maybe you should try audiobooks. Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks with over 150,000 titles in all areas of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Now this week, I wanted to recommend a book which had an impact on my life. It is called The E-Myth by Michael E. Gerber. It's a business book about why a lot of small businesses fail. It's because they have this myth at their core. The E-Myth is the entrepreneurial myth that if you know how to do something, for example, make videos, then you know how to make a business that does that thing. For example, make a video production business. That is just not the case. And I think the way that Michael Gerber approaches this subject from the myth forward, uh, you know, very much emulates what I did with my PhD thesis and what I do now on YouTube in the way I teach. And I found it also a very effective way to learn about making my own business. So if you are thinking about starting your own business, then I would highly, highly recommend this book. And in fact, you can download it for free by going to audible.com slash veritasium, or you can pick any other book of your choosing for a one month free trial. So I really want to thank Audible for supporting me, and I want to thank you for watching.